Now we're up to BR13, and this is the last triangle in the very bottom border. We're coming along right now. I've got, this is the um, adjusted for English paper piecing basically in this tip. So we've got this is our layout. I've numbered the pieces when I went to lay it out because um, a lot of the pieces are very, very similar and it does matter sometimes. So I've got them laid out here in an exploded version. What we're going to do is we're going to assemble this banded point section here first. You've got triangles and you've got diamonds. And so the basting, you want to baste all of the diamonds the same exact way. So I do opposite sides and then opposite sides. So if I do these two and then I'm going to do these two, I'm going to do the same exact thing here, here, and here. My basting on my triangles is going to be the same kind of thing. You want to make sure that the tags are going to nest. And the only way to do that is to do these all the same way. So I'm going to do the bottom first. In this case, it's the top. So I'm going to do this side and then one and two. And I'm going to do the same thing. If you want to do right and left, that's fine. But make sure you do the same thing on all of them. So I'm going to do one and then two and then three. And then baste one and then two and then three. What this is going to do is it's going to take my tags and push them to this side every time. So that when I get to this, because it's the same thing, so one, two, and three, my tag's going to be point pointing that way. And when I flip it, it will nest into the other point. So this will help me when I go to my assembly. Um, basting with this is I'm going to base these sides, the short sides first, and then the other sides, the triangles the same way. But we're going to work on this middle bar section, and then we'll be able to attach these pieces, and then these, and then this. So this is where the difficulty is. So I've got my first three pieces basted. <clears throat> I basted these, and then I basted these, so now I've got my tags going either in either direction. This one, I, I did opposite what I said. I did the bottom, and then I did this side, and then that side. But I did the same thing here. So as you can see, it's basted the same way, but when I flip it over, the tags are going to, if they're going to, if they touch, when they touch here, they're going to nest. So, or they're going to be pot opposing, So because the points are going to be touching. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to attach this piece to this piece and make this section right here on the edge. So I've assembled this first section and um, what I'm going to do moving forward, I got to keep these in order, I'm going to do the rows like this and then I'm going to connect these two rows making sure that my intersections are going to line up properly so this is going to line up with this one here and so on. So let me get some of these rows together. I am going to assemble them as I go because I don't want to flip these around. So uh, we'll just continue on down the line here. So I've assembled my second row and then I'm going to attach these and you see how the tags are going to nest right into each other. So I'm going to make sure that, that my points line up on the other side. I'm going to start at one end, go to about here, tie off, and then start at the other end so I know that this ends up at the right level across the triangle bottoms. So we've got these two rows assembled and, and sewed together. These are basted for the next row so I can assemble that. And I made sure that my um, triangles were lined up on the bottom here and at the top. So I'm just going to keep going and add in the next row. So I've got three rows all attached together. And we have the diamonds lining up in the center. So the last row here is going to be these three pieces. I'm going to connect these two, and then I'll stick this one on before attaching it to the remainder of the pieces. So I've got the two other triangles attached to this last diamond, and I will now attach it to the center section. So I've assembled this center band. All the pieces are here, so I've basted this top part and I'm going to attach it to the top of this. So the idea is that you attach this here and then it fits, but that's not the reality. In reality, we have a lot of fabric addition that's made this longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to force this into place. 
So when I tape this with the edges aligned, you've got this huge amount in the middle. And how do you're going to take that in? You're going to come in here and you're going to come. I'm going to come to about right here and tie off and come back here. But as I go through here, I'm going to make this. Um, I'm going to make this X stitch and pull these close so that I can minimize this distance. But this is one of the examples of a lot of of take up that we're going to have to happen. So I'll work my way across this seam very carefully. So I've got this top piece attached and you'll notice it's not flat, it's kind of all over the board. Once the papers come out, it will lay flat. So this is okay, but you've got, you know, it's okay to be not okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's the dimension the dimensionality there will work itself out. In the meantime, I'm going to take triangle number 3, not triangle number 1, and I'm going to stick it on the end here and do the same thing and force it into that space. So I've attached triangle number three to the middle unit. And so now I'm going to attach each side to the center. So I've attached each side to the center unit. And now the only thing left is to attach triangle number one to the point. So I've attached the triangle to the point and now my block is completed and just to note it has a lot of dimensionality to it and it's not flat that's okay that will come out in the uh, that'll come out in the wash once the papers are removed and then the quilt is quilted